Hi everyone! The theme of our November box is castles, courts, and kingdoms, and we thought it would be fun to share with you some of our favorite fantasy books. Now we've both read a lot of fantasy, and it's one of our favorite genres, and we're excited to share some of our favorite books with you. So let's get into it! So the first book I'm going to talk about is Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This is actually the bind-up of the first two books in the Ryuria Revelations series. In this book we follow two mercenaries who are hired to retrieve a stolen sword and then find themselves framed for the murder of the king. If you're looking for a high fantasy series that's easy to get into, I would definitely recommend starting here because the writing's very simple, it's very character driven, so you just love to get into the relationship between the two mercenaries in this book. I know it looks chunky and high fantasy often is, but you will fly through this. I read it a couple years ago and still think about it to this day. I think Michael J. Sullivan just does an excellent job with this world. So the first book that I wanted to talk about is Carval by Stephanie Garber. Now I'm sure this book doesn't really need an introduction as it was very very popular this year. Um, we also included it in our February circus box so that was really fun. But if you weren't aware this is a story about two sisters who have always dreamed of going and attending this kind of like carnival-esque game called Caraval um, where the audience kind of gets to be a part of the game itself. They've always dreamt of attending Caraval and they've written many letters to the game master whose name is Legend and then finally one year they get the chance to go. So they escape their abusive father and go to the game. I really love this story because the game itself is quite sinister and a little bit creepy but it's also full of whimsy and magic and it was just a very intriguing story um, and it was a lot of fun to read about so highly recommend this if you like anything to do with carnivals or circuses or games or like even like Alice in Wonderland it kind of has a similar vibe um, and it was just great. Next up I have The Way of Shadows and this is the first book in a trilogy by Brent Weeks. In this book we follow a boy named Azoth who is kind of a street urchin and just trying to survive in this very brutal city where he lives. Um, and to do so, he apprentices him himself to an assassin named Durzo Blint. Now, Durzo Blint is known in this world for being the best at his job, um, and he is highly sought after to take care of very dangerous situations. This book is very violent and very brutal, and I, when I was reading it, I found myself not really liking all of the characters. Like, they're all kind of terrible people, but they're all so fascinatingly written. Brent Weeks just does such a fascinating job um, really bringing these characters off the page which is kind of something you don't see as much in high fantasy. It's often very plot driven. This one isn't. Um, I think one of my favorite things, Durzo Blint is this just this brutal, hardcore, awful man, but he's kind of endearing in a way and he has this specific character trait that I think Brent Weeks did so well where he chews raw garlic. Um, which this like specific detail about him it made him so interesting because even like when a victim of his assassination, he, they could smell him coming with the raw garlic on his breath. So I just think Brent Weeks does an awesome job with the writing of this and it was unlike anything I've ever read before and I definitely recommend it. And next up is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I absolutely had to include this on my list because it's one of my favorite books that I've read in the entire year. It's about a group of six outcasts and they have to go on a heist together to break someone out of a impenetrable prison. I feel like the strength of this book lies in the characters themselves. Um, they're all very fleshed out and lovable even though they're definitely morally ambiguous and not really the nicest of people, um, but I love their friendship so much and every character just shines on their own. It was a really intense, action-packed story um, and the setting itself was really dark and mysterious and it's just one of the best books I've ever read so I highly recommend it. Next up I have Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Now this is definitely a classic in the YA high fantasy genre and it, it, for really good reason. This book is really really good. So in this book we follow Alina Starkov who is in the an orphan in the army and the only other person she has in her life is her best friend Mal. Very shortly into this book they get into a scary situation in which Mal is in serious danger and unbeknownst to her, Alina manifests these mysterious powers to save his life. After this power manifests from her, she is then recruited to join the Grisha army led by the mysterious Darkling. This book is so fast paced and the story is absolutely fascinating and you will fall in love with Lee Bardugo's writing. Now, I know a lot of people have read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, but not this series. And if you did like that series, I totally recommend picking up the predecessor because it's fascinating and I think you'll like it. And next up is Cinder, as well as the entire Luna Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer. These are essentially fairy tales told in space and 
they're just so much fun. Um, this also features a really great group of friends um, coming together and all of the characters are hilarious and lovable and it's just all about their hijinks that they get up to. It kind of has everything that you'd like in fairy tales. It has like a lost princess, an evil queen, lots of different kind of magical things happening and it's all kind of set in space so it's a very unique um, angle on the tale. Next, I have The Furies of Calderon, and this is book one in the Codex Alera series. Now, I was I picked up this book not expecting to get a lot from it, just kind of thought it was going to be run-of-the-mill fantasy because I read a lot of that, and I was pleasantly surprised. So in this world, people are granted the power of Furies, and this is like an elemental power like fire or wind or earth that kind of just help them in their day-to-day -day lives as well as in the army. Our main character, Tavi, is a 15-year-old boy who has not had any Furies granted to him yet, and this is very uncommon and very unhelpful. At the beginning of this book, Tavi helps to save a woman's life named Amara and brings her back to his village, and this small event kind of changes the course of history. This is a six-book series, and the books are quite long, but I absolutely flew through this in like a week because it's, this world is just so great and rich. And the main character of Tavi, though he starts when he's 15, literally ages throughout the six books to become this just intelligent and really awesome man. And his character is wonderful. And next up is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Um, this is a very fun story that's very different from Rainbow's other books because this one is a fantasy uh, novel. This story follows our main character, Simon Snow, who's been brought up believing that he's the chosen one. And yet he really fails at living this kind of life. So the story follows Simon as he attends a magical school called Watford and it's all about his trials and tribulations with his roommate and nemesis Baz, who may or may not be a vampire. The story takes a lot of inspiration from Harry Potter, but Rainbow Rowell definitely puts her unique twist on everything and it definitely feels like it can stand alone on its own. And another thing that I really like about it is it's a fantasy that features a gay relationship, which I just think is something that you don't really see that often, so I appreciated that and it was just a blast to read. Next up, I have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I am obviously Brandon Sanderson obsessed, but this one might be my all-time favorite. This book is really hard to explain because there's so much going on with here, but I'm gonna do my best to sum it up quickly. In here, we follow sisters Viviana and Ciri, one of whom is betrothed to marry the God King, who is kind of like this world's almighty, om omniscient, powerful person. We also follow the point of view of a man named Light Song, who is technically a god as well, known as a lesser god who is just a human who has died a heroic death and then come been brought back to life. Now Light Song is a really funny and sassy character and he is just has no interest in being a god so reading from his point of view is really interesting. And the last point of view in here is a surly dark man named Vasher who is trying to redeem for something that happened hundreds of years ago. Now if you've read some Brandon Sanderson you know that romance isn't a huge part of his storylines. There's definitely romance in his books but it's not the main focus. So if you're looking for a Brandon Sanderson with more romance I would recommend this one. Again, not the main part, but it's a little bit more present in this story. This book also has one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever read about, and Brandon Sanderson is known for creating very unique um, magic systems. And in this one, every person has something called breath, and with breath, you can absorb colors from the things around you and that will give you certain powers. I'm not describing it very well but it is such a fascinating use of the world um, and it kind of your class and society is determined by how many breaths you have. That's really all I'm gonna say about this book. It is so good. Um, I can't recommend it enough. One of my favorite Sanderson books of all time. And next up is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutuski which is a story about a girl named Kestrel who lives a very privileged life her father is actually the general of the army and he's kind of given Kestrel two options. She can either join the army or get married and Kestrel isn't happy with either of those. One day Kestrel visits the market in town where she comes upon a slave auction and for reasons unbeknownst to her she feels compelled to buy one of the boys who's up for auction named Aaron. Aaron comes to live at the estate with her and they begin to build a relationship, but Aaron also has a lot of secrets. I absolutely love this series, um, especially because of the character of Kestrel. I find that she is incredibly intelligent and she knows how to fight without being violent. Um, she fights with her mind. I also appreciated that it's a forbidden romance that really makes sense and you want to root for them to succeed even though 
all hope seems lost. Um, and I just think it's a really intricate and wonderfully written story. Next up, I have The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. Now this is a book that is also considered a classic in YA fantasy, and it's definitely for good reason. In this book, we follow a boy named Han, who is a previous thief who is now trying to live in the right in order to support his family, um, but it is not going so well for him. Now Han has something interesting in him, about him in that uh, for his whole life he has had metal cufflinks around both of his arms that have grown with him and that cannot be removed. As far as he can tell, these metal bands don't serve any purpose, but they're just kind of part of him. We also follow a princess named Reza, who is very much higher than Han in this story, and she is set to be betrothed to somebody who goes against all of her ideals, so she runs away from the palace. And then, as you would expect, Han and Reza meet in some exceptional cir circumstances and their adventure takes off from there. It is a wonderful book. I haven't read any other Cinder Williams Chima books, but this one made me very excited to continue on with this world because I know I think she has nine books set in this world now, and I cannot wait to see what happens with these characters. And next up I wanted to talk about The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Um, this is a story about a girl named Leah who, on her wedding day, decides to run away and flee the kingdom. We follow Leah as she runs to a small village and tries to start her life over being a barmaid. Um, meanwhile, the prince that she ran away from is looking for her as well as an assassin. What makes this book really unique is that the story is told through three perspectives. Leah, the assassin, and the prince, and you don't know who is who other than Leah. But it keeps you guessing all the way to the end and it's just... I don't know, it's just a really unique kind of story where a love triangle actually makes sense, which is rare. So I highly recommend this one. Next, I have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now I'm sure most of you have heard of this book. It is an adult high fantasy novel, but it is kind of permeated the YA world. It is well loved for sure. And I'm not gonna actually sum this one up because I had I tried and I just had such a hard time, but there is a really cool quote on the back that'll probably be intriguing to you. So it says, I have stolen princesses back from sleeping barrow kings. I burned down the town of Trebon. I have spent the night with Falurian and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from university at a younger age than most people are allowed in. I tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during the day. I have talked to gods, loved women, and written songs that will make the minstrels weep. I am Quoth, and you may have heard of me. This is the story of our main character, Quoth, and it is just such a well-crafted world. There are only two books out in this trilogy right now, but I encourage you to read them because they are just that good. And next up, I wanted to discuss The Glass Arrow by Kristen Simmons. Now, this is unique in the sense that it really feels like a dystopian and a high fantasy novel wrapped into one. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the inside flap because I think it describes the overall world very well. It's about um, a world where women are property to be sold and owned and bred, while a strict census keeps their numbers manageable and under control. The best any girl can hope for is to end up as some man's forever wife, but most are simply sold and resold until they're all used up. Our main character, Aya, has spent her entire life hiding in the mountains with her family to try and escape this horrible society until the day she is captured. Once Aya is kidnapped, we follow her journey as she is prepared for auction and tries to escape. If you like brutal dystopians like The Handmaid's Tale, I think you'll probably really enjoy this, and I just feel like it is such an underhyped fantasy story. Next, I have Finnegan of the Rock by Melina Marchetta. In this book, we follow a boy named Finnegan, who 10 years ago had to leave the kingdom where he grew up, as it was cursed and the whole royal family was murdered and nobody is allowed back inside. At the beginning of this book, he finds out that his childhood best friend, who was the prince of this kingdom, is actually alive, and from there starts a journey back home. This is an awesome kind of classic fantasy quest situation, and the characters in here are great. There's a, a beautiful romance, and the ending just ends up so well. I was so satisfied by the ending of this book. It's also the first book in a companion trilogy. I haven't read the other two yet because I'm nervous about companion books, uh, but I've heard they're amazing, and I, if this book has any indication, they certainly will be. And next up, I wanted to talk about Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic. This is a story about a family in which all of the women are born with a unique power where they can manipulate beauty in different ways. We follow our main characters who are a set of twins, um, kind of coming to terms with their powers and their relationship with their mother. They've been brought up to keep their powers a secret from everybody around them, but when their mother is mysteriously attacked, the girls have to kind of figure out how to use their powers to save her. I thought that the writing in this novel was just absolutely beautiful. Um, the descriptions of the city where it takes place, Montenegro, are just so lush and I've never read a book that takes place there. And it was just an absolute delight to read. If you like, um, kind of romantic, flowery, 
descriptions. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. My final book I'm going to talk about is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. Locke Lamora is probably one of my all-time favorite characters in any book ever. He is such a deeply flawed character but at the same time he's so intriguing and charming and talented and I love following his story. In this book we follow the adventures of a band of thieves called the Gentleman Bastards who are known as the richest and cleverest men in Camor. All of the members of this group of people are so differently characterized but just so fascinating. Locke's best friend John is hilarious and their adventures together give me life. This is another one that's super easy to get into and if you haven't picked it up yet even though it's adult fantasy, I definitely recommend you give it a try. Next up is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Um, this is the story mostly about two main characters, Leia and Elias. Leia is a girl whose brother is arrested for treason and in an effort to help him she decides to join the rebel forces in this world um, and infiltrate the Empire's military academy and Elias is a soldier at this academy. The world in the story is inspired by ancient Rome and it's incredibly brutal and violent and our story just follows what happens when Leia and Elias meet. Originally I didn't think that this book would be for me um, but then I just kind of picked it up on a whim and I read it in pretty much one or two sittings. It was action-packed and I just loved it from beginning to end. I really enjoyed all of the characters, even the evil characters were multi-dimensional and interesting to read about and yeah, it just kept me on the edge of my toes. So if you haven't picked up this series yet, I highly recommend it. The third book in the series is coming out sometime next year so you've got some time to catch up. Alright, so that was just a few of the fantasy books that we have read and really enjoyed. We'll leave a list of all of the books we talked about in the description down below. As per usual, please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.